you want to create a WAN cable solution to power your computer, keep it plugged into monitors and other peripherals, then you need a docking station. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the Anchor Thunderbolt 5 docking station. This gives up to 180 watts of power total, 140 watts going to the host port, and it uses speeds all the way up to Thunderbolt 5, which is going to give you the fastest possible data rates and better compatibility with using multiple Thunderbolt devices at the same time. So in this video, we're going to look at this dock, see all the ports it has, and talk about who I think this is for, and who should maybe go for a different docking station instead. I do want to say Anchor sent me this for free for purposes of making this video. I've got no input into this content. This is based on my thoughts on the dock after testing it for a while, and who I think it's for, and who should maybe steer clear and get a different docking station instead. So the first thing that I was very surprised at when I got this out of the box is, it's pretty big. It's actually bigger than the M4 Mac Mini. But part of the reason for this is because the power supply is actually built into this. Most docking stations I've tested recently have had an external power supply. This one has the power supply built right in. and gives up to 180 watts of power going between all the different ports. So you get up to 140 watts going to your host port, and there's an additional 40-ish watts of power that can go to the other devices. So if you use the front ports, those get 45 watts total. So if you want top possible charging speeds, then it's just going to depend on what the different devices you have plugged in. This is technically a Thunderbolt 5 dock, but I've been testing it with some Thunderbolt 4 computers as well, like my M4 MacBook Air. It's working great on that, and it's also been performing really well with my M4 Max Max Studio. The first big downside I did find with this dock, though, is it doesn't support Thunderbolt 3, unfortunately, so you will need to have a newer computer to take advantage of this dock. And if you want to get the fastest possible speeds, you're going to need one of the newer computers that has the Thunderbolt 5 ports on it. Let's look at all the ports. On the front of it, there's two USB-C ports, a USB-A port, and all those support speeds all the way up to 10 gigabits a second. And there's also a headset jack on the front as well. Then on the back of it is where we have the bulk of our ports. We have the spot to plug in the power cable. There's the host port that goes to the computer. Two more Thunderbolt 5 ports. You get two 10 gigabit a second USB-A ports, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, and then you can choose to either use HDMI or display port. So it's nice that there's actually a port to plug in a monitor on this. A lot of the Thunderbolt 5 docks have not had this port. Then on the side of it, there's a micro SD and an SD card slot. Unfortunately, these are the slower speeds, so you're not going to get the UHS-2 faster transfer speeds, which is a little bit of a letdown on this. I also did find myself to be a little bit disappointed that the network jack is only for 2.5 gigabits. I know not everyone needs 10 gigabits, but if you're getting a Thunderbolt dock, it would be really nice to have that so you don't have to use one of the other ports up if you want to use a 10 gig adapter. There's also this really cool ambient light on the top of it. It glows blue, and you can actually turn it off with the power button on the front if you want, or you can also press and hold the power button if you want to power the whole dock and anything plugged into it down at the same time. In the box, you do also get the nice Thunderbolt 5 cable, and there's also a power cable in the box as well. The main reason to get a Thunderbolt 5 dock is if you want to plug this into multiple high-resolution external displays because you can use one cable and have your whole setup working. I think the biggest con to this dock, though, is it only has two additional Thunderbolt ports on the back of it, which can really add up fast if you're going to use a studio display on one or both of them. Then you're going to need to plug your other Thunderbolt peripherals directly into your computer, which kind of gets rid of the point of the docking station. I do really like that they put an HDMI or display port, though. You just have to choose which of it you're going to use. You can't use both. I did try to use the HDMI port with my LG dual up display though, and it wasn't able to work because it didn't support non-standard resolution. So I felt like the resolution list that I was getting on Mac OS for these ports was kind of limited. So that's definitely a downside depending on the way that you want to use this. One other reason to get Thunderbolt 5 is if you want to use it with the fastest possible external SSDs. And even when I was plugging in my external 80 gigabit a second enclosure to this, I didn't notice any slowdowns versus using it plugged directly into my computer. So this does give you very fast speeds. I did notice that this dock gets hotter than some of the other ones as well, probably because the power supply is built straight into it, but it didn't seem to give me any issues with performance. I never had any devices coming disconnected from this, even when using it all day long. One of the cons to this dock is depending on how many displays you want to use and the host device that you're using this with, you may run into some issues. And they have a chart on their website that's a little bit confusing to navigate. So make sure you check that out to ensure the setup you want to use with this and the computer you've got are going to be fully compatible with this dock. The Anchor Thunderbolt 5 dock retails for about $400, which I feel is a little bit expensive for everything that you get with this dock. It really gives you plenty of ports. I really like all the different options on it. I just feel like it's missing one Thunderbolt port on it. One more on the front would be really nice for plugging in external displays or enclosures or an extra one on the back. I'd also love to see the network updated to be a 10 gigabit and the SD card slots to be faster on this. There's two main standout options when you compare it to the Anchor one. There's the CalDigit Element 5, 
That one gives you less total ports, but you can still use all those ports to do pretty much anything. You just don't get any network ports or HDMI or display ports or the SD card readers, but you can always use adapters to change the ports that are built in to, to do pretty much whatever you want. And there's also the Sonnet Echo 13 SSD dock. It comes in at a very similar price point while giving you a built-in one, two, or four terabyte SSD, depending on how much you spend on it. I really like that one because the SSD comes in handy for giving you more space on your computer. That one just doesn't have a built-in HDMI or display port, but again, you can adapt the Thunderbolt 5 to do pretty much anything on it. And that one seems to have better backwards compatibility with Thunderbolt 3 devices as well. But this anchor docking station is really for the user who wants all the USB-A ports, all the USB-C ports, the power supply that's built straight into it, and just in this nice cube-shaped enclosure because it's going to be a little bit more sleek and minimal than having to deal with an external power brick because all you got to do is plug the power cord directly into the back of it. So I think this is really for the user who wants an all-in-one solution to keep a computer powered while also giving plenty of power out to keep tablets or other devices charged with the ports on the front and while still giving you the ability to plug it into an external display with an HDMI or a display port. But it's maybe going to be a little limited if you have a ton of Thunderbolt devices like studio displays and then other fast Thunderbolt storage. That's when you might find that only having two Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back is going to limit you a little bit. But I think this is really targeted for the user who wants lots of power to charge devices with the front ports while giving you plenty of USB-C and USB-A ports and just the ability to use this with an external display. If you're interested in buying the Anchor Thunderbolt 5 docking station, I do have links to buy in the description below. If you got any other questions about this, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear them. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.